Okay, this is uh, the demo of our first development sprint on a project called Spotlight, which is a plugin for Blacklight 5 that adds a lot of functionality to Blacklight um, that enables librarians, curators, and archivists to better highlight and showcase digital collections without requiring any programming or uh, development effort. So we just started formal development on the project Tuesday of last week, but the development team has worked really hard and made very significant progress in less than two weeks. So I have plenty to show you in this video. So what you're looking at now is a uh, new exhibit or spotlight instance um, with no customization yet, except that we're starting with some repository items uh, that have been selected and uh, indexed. Um, so this is placed on Blacklight 5. Uh, which was released just a couple of days ago. Uh, so we get all the latest improvements in Blacklight um, in Spotlight. So you'll notice there isn't much um, on the, uh, the site right now. Um, we have just the home link here. Um, and uh, we do have uh, our fixture data, which is from the Maps of Africa collection. Um, so we have items uh, included and indexed. But other than that, um, there's no uh, customization for this exhibit. So um, what I'm going to do is um, go through um, and show how we would actually create uh, the Maps of Africa exhibit with um, the uh, features that we've uh, built in Sprint 1. So I'm going to start by um, logging in as an administrator. Uh, Spotlight has um, two roles. Um, which are administrator and curator, and administrator has uh, all the powers of the curator um, plus some extras in, that allow them to uh, set up the exhibit, and um, the um, curators have uh, all the, the capabilities to actually build the exhibit. So I'm going to sign in as the administrator first, um, and you'll see I'm logged in as the um, an administrator user, um, and I have access to both administration and curation features. So I'm going to start by um, going to the administration um, section here, um, where we can uh, give our exhibit a title. Um, so this is a Maps of Africa exhibit. So I can uh, give us a title, and I can add a subtitle here. Uh, tell a little bit more about what we're, uh, what our exhibit's about, and um, eventually we'll have some other um, information um, that the administrator can set up uh, about the exhibit. But for now, we'll do those, and um, you'll see um, that we now have a title for exhibit and a subtitle, um, and um, the, um, that's all I'm going to do as the administrator. The, eventually, the administrator will also be able to uh, manage users and add users. Um, so uh, the scenario there is they'll be able to add other people probably as curators to allow other people to help build the site. So I'm going to sign out real quick here and uh, log in as a curator. And now that I'm logged in as a curator, um, I can go to the curation um, side of things, and these are all the um, options a curator has for um, actually building the site. And so um, the first one here is the items. So these are all the items that we would have imported into our exhibit that we want to be part of our exhibit, and there'll be more features added here later for uh, fine-tuning the management of the items in the exhibit. Um, but uh, there's a lot of other customization building options that are already working, so um, let's look at them by starting to actually um, build the exhibit maybe with the most obvious uh, starting place, uh, which would be the home page. So if we go to the feature pages, um, we can add a home page. We'll come back to the feature pages later for the other types of feature pages, but the home page is a special type of feature page. So if we add a new um, home page, um, give it a title, and um, here we're going to add a widget. So um, these are widgets, and we're going to be adding a lot more widgets. Um, we just have a few uh, widgets to start with here. 
Um, so I'm going to add a text widget, which is just a simple text block. And then I'm also going to add another widget, which um, uh, we built um, that brings in a um, an item from the, the exhibit um, and displays uh, the uh, thumbnail for that um, item. So I'm going to save the home page. And now that our home page is saved, we can go to home and check it out. And uh, I might have done something wrong there. So home page. Oh, I didn't save the changes here. OK, well, um, it's a demo, so things go wrong. And that didn't work as I expected. But um, you'll see how the feature pages work in a minute. Um, and um, they'll be very similar to how the home page works. So let me go next to, to the about pages um, and uh, create a couple of about pages. Uh, these are similar to what we just uh, looked at with the um, home page. Uh, we'll give a title to uh, our about page and um, include some text in a text widget. Um, and I'm going to save that and um, create another about page really quickly. Let's say it's a resources page. Um, and I'm going to uh, add a list of sorry, I clicked something I shouldn't. Um, I'm going to add a list of resources here and save this page. And so now we have uh, two about pages defined. Um, we can uh, actually move these pages around in order, um, which changes the order in which um, they're displayed in the sidebar, which I'll show you in a second. Um, there's also this checkbox, which is the publish or visibility setting. So right now, neither of these are uh, published. And you'll see there's, there's no way to get to the about pages from the site. But if I go ahead and click both of these and save our changes, you'll see now we have an about uh, action in our main menu. And we go to that, um, we'll see uh, our about page. Um, we, let me go back here real quick. We should actually see a sidebar link to the other one. Um, but for some reason, the second one did not show up. But there's the other about page. So um, we should see a sidebar here with uh, links to both of the about pages. So um, about pages are useful, but um, the purpose here in creating um, an exhibit is we want to highlight the items in our collection. So we can do that in a couple of ways. Uh, the simplest way is um, to make it easier for users to browse um, uh, our collection. Um, and um, we can do that by creating some browsable uh, categories or, or subsets. So uh, let me go ahead and pick uh, uh, an example here. So uh, maybe I'll do West Africa, do a search on that. And I could fine tune this by any search terms. but. Um, let me just uh, go with this search results here. And because I'm a curator, there's this um, action here, save this search. Um, so I can save a search there. And um, I want to give it a title. I'll call it Maps of West Africa. Save that. Um, and while I'm here, let me just do one other quick search. So let's say I found this result set that I want to make easier for, for the end users to, to find. So I'm going to save this, give it a name. So I have a couple saved searches now. And um, I can, you know, as a curator, I can save any kind of search I want. But now, because I have some saved searches, when I go to the curation side of things and I look under Browse, you'll see we have two these two searches I just saved. 
and um, they have the title I gave them. Um, but there's other information we can um, add to these to make them more useful. So for the uh, Maps of West Africa um, Save Search, um, I'm going to give it a, uh, a short description, um, which is going to be used on the Browse Category landing page. And then we can have a long description, um, which will be used on the detail page. I can also change the thumbnail that's used to represent um, this uh, browse category. So I can pick a different thumbnail. And if I save this, um, uh, I now have uh, the details for that, that browse category um, saved. And I'm going to do this really quickly just so you can see the effect of doing this. Uh, for the other category. So I save this and like with the about pages you don't see any way to get to the browse categories um, from the menu yet because they're unpublished. Um, but I can um, rearrange these um, to affect the order that they're displayed when we do publish them and then I can choose to publish them here. And now when I save my changes here you see we now have a browse um, menu item. I click on browse uh, we have the landing page for the browse categories, which will show us all our saved searches. So um, we could add, you know, many more here. And then when we click on one, uh, we get the detail page for the uh, that browse category. So this is our long description. So this could be something the curator, um, you know, put some effort into providing some curatorial uh, description of this category. Um, and then we have our um, results for that category here. Um, and this is just like a standard uh, search results in Blacklight. We click on a, a detail, uh, an item, we go to the detail page. So uh, that's the browse categories. Um, and that, that gives the, the curator, I think, a pretty simple way to um, highlight subsets of the collection. Um, and, uh, and it makes it easier for end users to come into the site and just sort of browsing around without having to do some explicit search. So that's one way to highlight part of the collection and provide some curatorial description. Um, there's a more powerful way, which is the uh, feature pages. So let's go back and look at those again. So the feature pages um, are more detailed sort of um, paths through the, the, the collection that the curator um, can create. And so um, these... Uh, Works similar to how um, I showed with the home page. I'm going to uh, create a new feature page, give it a title. Um, I'm going to add a couple widgets so there's something on the page. So we'll add a text widget, add some text, and I'm going to add the, uh, the item record widget. And here you see we have an option to show or not show the title of that item. So we'll show the title. Um, and I'm going to save this. And so now we have uh, one feature page. Um, and just to demonstrate some of the, the really nice functionality with the feature pages, I'm going to create another feature page uh, really quickly. Um, and uh, let's see, we'll call this looks really maps. And add some text and save that. So now we have two. And I'm going to add just one more feature page really quickly. Add another record so we have something on the page. Save that. So now you see we have our three feature pages we've just defined. None of these are published. Um, we have some options. We can change the title. Um, we can choose to show um, the sidebar on the page or not. So curators who want to use the full width of the page um, for their, their content can uh, do that. And we can also rearrange, as we saw earlier. Um, 
affects the order that they'll be shown in the uh, menus. Um, and we can also um, uh, make child pages for features. So um, if we want this feature page to be um, a child of this one, a sub page, we can uh, do that just by dragging and dropping. So I'm going to save these changes. And oops, I forgot to make them visible. So let's publish them. And now you see that um, we have another item added to the main menu, which is called curated features, because we have two parent features and this one child feature. And um, so the really nice thing here is that um, this, this menu bar, as you've been seeing with, when I've added pages, um, it's dynamic and it recognizes when it needs to show the category uh, for content that is, that is there. So if we, for example, uh, unpublish one of our feature pages, so we only have one parent feature page now, and we save this. Um, since we only have one feature, now we just show the name of the feature because there's only one uh, uh, feature to go to. So um, if we go to that feature, um, here's our uh, content that we've added to that, that feature page. So presumably, the, you know, this would be a lot richer uh, as we more add more widgets and give the curators a lot more power to uh, arrange the content on the page. Um, this feature had a subsection, um, and so that's shown here um, in the uh, sidebar. So there can be many child pages here, um, and um, the user can navigate uh, between them in the sidebar. So here's our subpage that we added. Um, because I'm a curator, um, I can also go in and edit these pages directly um, and add new widgets and, and so on. So uh, those are the feature pages. Um, and uh, along with the, the browse categories and um, the about pages, I think that they, those features enable the curator to quickly build out the exhibit site. Um, but there are also a couple other features for um, site customization uh, that we've already got working that I want to quickly show. So one of these is um, the metadata. So uh, this feature um, sh shows you all the uh, metadata fields that um, come with the records uh, that you've imported into your exhibit um, and gives you ways to, uh, as a curator, to selectively show, choose which fields you want to show on the item details page on the list view of search results and the gallery view of search results. So this feature is intended to um, you know, enable the curator in the context of, of an exhibit where um, they might want to selectively only show some um, fields in those, um, on the item details page, for example, to make it more compact and highlight, better highlight just the images and, or the items in the collection and not have every single metadata field showing. Um, and uh, with the list and gallery views and the search results, this gives the curators um, a way to sort of customize for the type of exhibit and the type of items that are in exhibit, which are the best fields maybe to show um, in, the, um, in the search results. Um, so it gives them a way to sort of fine tune, fine uh, tune um, these changes. And I'm not sure if this is uh, completely working or not, but let's... Um, See here, so geographic subject is showing. Um, we'll go back here real quick. Yeah, and so see, geographic subject was the field that I chose for that list view. And uh, if I wanted to show temporal subject instead, go to search results, and now we're showing temporal subject. So. This is really powerful, I think, in, in letting the, the curator really easily customize um, uh, the metadata fields they want to show in, in various places. Um, one other customization feature that is now working um, is the search facets. And this is a really great one. Um, so these are all the facets that um, are part of the items that we have in our exhibit. Um, so they're all listed here. Um, you can see the different unique values um, that are uh, available for each um, facet. Um, 
and how many items um, are are the, in the exhibit um, are, have that facet value uh, or fields of the values in that facet field. So the great thing is. Um, in the, the context of, of a given exhibit, some of these facets might not be um, all that useful. For example, here, all of our resources, because the map collection, all of our resources are cartographic. So this, this facet field is really not useful at all. So um, the, the curator can go in and just choose to uh, not show that particular facet. Um, the um, curator can also change the the labels of these facets. So um, maybe we'll call genre subject instead. Um, so we'll we'll hide a couple of these facets and change the name of genre to subject. We save our changes. Now you'll see we have this is used to be genre, now it's subject, and we're no longer showing the facets that we don't think are useful for our end users. So um, I think that's going to be a really handy facet, uh, I mean a handy feature for, for people to use. Um, to customize the, the look and feel of their exhibit. Um, and uh, I think those are the, the biggest, uh, big features um, that we've done in Sprint 1. Um, so I think this is uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, and um, I'm just going to log out as the curator um, and show you how the end user um, would see the site. So site visitor would come to the site and you saw that um, you know this is pretty quick. We've been able to, to sort of um, build out uh, this, this functionality here um, with, without doing you know any programming uh, at all. So um, yeah so those are the big features we added in Sprint 1 and uh, Sprint 2 starts next week. And um, we'll have another, another demo soon to show the accomplishments of um, Sprint 2. So stay tuned.